Hi, I'm Marie Shaw. I'm a sophomore at Carnegie Mellon University, and this summer I did my summer internship at Docker. First of all, I want to thank my mentor, Patrick Devine, Dustin Lacewell for writing Docker Console and helping me add all of these features to it, and Mariana Tessel for giving me this internship opportunity. So Docker Console is a user interface for Docker. It's a text-based user interface, so based on keystrokes, you can do commands such as start, stop, delete, run, push and pull with Docker containers and images. And this is really helpful in a variety of situations. For example, if you're working with Docker by SSHing into a VM, for example, Docker console is really helpful because you can access it from the command line. So now I'd like to show you guys some of the features that I worked on. Okay, so this is what you see when you start up Docker console. As you can see from the top, there's containers and images, and you can press tab to switch between both of them. The list of containers and images that you see here are basically parallel to what you see when you type in docker ps or docker images. So as you can see, here's the list of containers and here it is shown in docker console and for images, it's the same. So here's the list of images that you see when you type in docker images to the command line and here's the list of images you see in docker console. Okay, so here is the menu for containers. So as you can see, there is a list of what commands that you have, what the key bindings are for each of them, and a short description of each one. So I'm going to show you some of these commands. So the first feature I worked on when I got to Docker was multi-selection. So with Docker Console, you can select multiple containers or images at the same time and do a command on them. So let's select these three Ubuntu containers and stop them. This takes them off of the running containers list. So you can toggle to show all the running containers and those that you've exited out of. So these three that we exited zero minutes ago from are the ones that we just stopped. So now that they're exited out of, you can start them back up again. So this takes them back up, takes it back up to the running containers list, as you can see here. And you can also select multiple of them at the same time and delete them. So this is really helpful because when you're working with Docker, a lot of time it tends, a lot of containers tend to pile up, and you you exit out of them, you finish working with them, and they just lie there taking up a lot of space. So with Docker Console, you can visually see which containers that you've already exited out of and you don't need anymore. Select all of them and delete them at once. If you had to do this with the Docker command line, this would take a little bit more time because first of all, you would have to find the ID. Of the, way, of the container that you want to delete, uh, get it, and then remove it. And you would have to do this individually for every single container that you want to delete, whereas in Docker Console, it just takes a couple of keystrokes and you're done. So next, I want to show you my favorite feature with Docker Console, running containers. So the first thing you do is you select which containers you want to run. So in this case, I'm going to select Ubuntu, CentOS, DIN, Docker and Docker, and Nginx. I'm going to press the command to run the container, and this prompt pops up asking me if I want to run it in Tmux or Screen. So I'm going to choose Screen for this. And here it is. All four containers are up and running. Up here you can see the container ID, and down here you can see which container you're in. And as long as you know how to use Screen or Tmux, it should be pretty easy to switch between all four of them, split the screen, and work with them as, as you want. So... And if you wanted to do this with the Docker CLI, you would have to use Docker exec bin bash um, for all of them and manually set up screen or team mux to set up your work environment. I'm going to show you a couple more features. So I implemented pause and unpause, which should show up in the status bar here. So pause, unpause, pause, unpause. And there's also features like restart and kill, but those are pretty similar to what I've already shown you, so I won't show you those. And I also implemented scrollable pop-ups. So these display information of the containers. So for example, this is changes to the file system or from the, from the Docker command line would be uh, docker diff. You can scroll up to see um, it for all of them. You can also do inspect details. Um, so this is docker inspect. 
And there's also the current running processes on each of these containers as well, which is Docker top. So that's an organized way to show some basic information of containers. Next, uh, you can also rename containers. So if you look here, the name of this container right now is Compassionate Pair. And I can rename it to whatever I want. So it's the Compassionate Docker. And hopefully it should show up. There it is. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to commit containers. Okay, so let's commit this BusyBox container. So if you press the key command to commit it, this prompt will pop up. And if you press enter here, it will commit with the tag latest. But let's add a tag for this demo, um, demo and see what happens. So I press enter, and if I move over to the images tab, you can see that BusyBox demo appears. And it's been committed. So now let's work with the images tab. So here's the menu for images. A lot of the commands are the same as with containers. For example, delete, inspect, and view history work basically the same. But I'm going to show you how to push and pull images using Docker console. So first of all, let's pull an image. So let's pull um, hello world. If, when you press the key command for pulling an image, this blank prompt pops up and you just have to uh, type in the name of the repo you want and press enter. And hopefully, hello world should show up. And there it is. Okay, so now let's try pushing an image. So if we check at my Docker Hub account right now, you can see that there are no repos. So let's choose a uh, image to push. So I'm going to choose HTTPD and I'm going to tag it. So I'm going to press the command to tag and I'm going to add my hub user ID in the front, which is Marie. And there it is. There's my tagged image and it's ready to be pushed. So I'm going to press the command for push and it should highlight the container, I mean the image that's being pushed. And this might take a while, so I'm going to skip through this. Okay, so here's the message that shows up once the pushing is complete. So you can scroll through it and see at the bottom that the image has successfully been pushed. So let's check back to my Hub account. So here's my Hub account. I'm going to refresh the page, and hopefully the image we just pushed should show up. And there it is, Marie slash HTTPD. That's pushing and pulling with Docker Console. There's one more thing I want to show you, so let's move on to this tab over here. And this is Docker Console working with Swarm. So I set up a little Swarm with two nodes, as you can see here, and with, little, with a couple containers and some images. And for Docker Console with Swarm, all the same commands that work with Docker Console should work with Swarm, which means that you don't have to type out that uh, huge IP address every time you want to do something from the command line. So that's it. This is Docker Console. I hope you enjoyed my presentation. And thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please email me. And also, all the code for Docker Console is up on GitHub. So you can check out the link below and see the code or add things to it if you want. Thanks. Bye.